We're going to talk about neurons and how neurons fire. The nervous system, the nervous system cells have, or sorry, are neurons. The neurons are broken up into three different parts. The first part is called the dendrite. The second part is the cell body and the last part is the tail. So here all these branches of the tree, so to speak, are the dendrites. The big part in the middle, you see there's a nucleus and some endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus and mitochondria and ribosomes, all that stuff, that normal cell part stuff, is right in the middle with the cell body. And then this really long tail is the axon. Now, structure equals function, okay? The shape always equals the job, no matter what it is that we're talking about in biology. Structure equals function. Now, there's many different points for a signal to come in. So lots of different points. There, 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 there. All those dendrites is where signals can come in. So it has a very large net to catch as many different signals to help in communications as it possibly can. But there's only one pathway out. That means it can carry messages, get a lot of different inputs, and send it all in the same direction very quickly because there's only one path out. And again, it carries a message. The last thing I want to mention here is that the direction in which this message is carried is always starting at the dendrite and working to the axon. Dendrite cell body axon. That is always the direction for how a message goes through a neuron. It comes into the dendrite, through the cell body, and then through the axon. So when a signal goes through a neuron, I want you to think of dominoes. When you first set up dominoes, I don't know if everybody's done this before or not, when you first set them up, okay, you got, you got to set them up before you can do anything else. But then after you set them up, you knock over the first one. And as soon as that first domino is knocked over, then it knocks down the second domino. And the third domino and the fourth domino knocks down the fifth, the fifth domino knocks down the sixth, the sixth domino knocks down the seventh, so on and so forth down the line. And before you can knock down the dominoes again, you got to set them back up. The, almost the exact same thing happens when we talk about firing of a neuron. It's an all or nothing, just like the dominoes. Once you knock over the first one, you can't get it back. You can't be like, ah, pause, time out. Can we stop that? It doesn't work that way. It's all or nothing. Okay, so it's very, the way a neuron fires is very, very similar to knocking down dominoes. So before we get into that, we have to know a little bit about our cells. So our cells are surrounded by charged ions. So what we mean by these charged ions is these molecules that either have a positive charge or a negative charge to them. Anions are the negative charged ones, so things like chlorine and amino acids, okay? Those are inside of the cell. So anions are within or on the inside of the cell. Our cations are positively charged, and they're in the outside of the cell. So outside of the cell, here's all of our cations, our positively charged ones. Inside of the cell, there's all our negatively charged ones. Wait a second. Hold on, Flanagan. There's a positively charged potassium on the inside and a positively charged potassium on the inside. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But overall, on the inside of the cell, there's more negatives than there are positives. So we call the inside of the cell negative. So cells have voltage. Okay, there's opposite charges, just like we went over. It's negative on the inside of the cell and positive on the outside of the cell due to those charges that we just talked about. We have looked at the resting potential in a neuron that is not transmitting nerve signals. What happens when the cell is stimulated? A stimulus changes the permeability of the cell membrane to sodium and potassium ions. This alters the distribution of charge in the cell body, and if the change is great enough, it triggers a signal, called an action potential, that moves down the axon. How does the action potential move along the axon? 
Voltage gated channels in the membrane open and close depending on voltage changes across the membrane. When no nerve signals are being transmitted, these channels are closed. A stimulus causes voltage gated sodium channels to open and sodium ions rush into the cell. The cell becomes positive on the inside and negative on the outside. Very quickly, the sodium channels close while voltage gated potassium channels open, allowing potassium ions to rapidly diffuse out. The cell returns to being positive on the outside and negative on the inside and the potassium channels close. Meanwhile, the sodium ions inside the cell have diffused to adjacent areas, causing a slight change in the polarity of the membrane ahead of the action potential. This change in polarity causes the voltage-gated sodium channels along this part of the membrane to open. Again, sodium ions rush in and the action potential spreads to the adjacent part of the neuron. In this way, the action potential travels down the neuron like a wave. In the wake of the action potential, potassium leaves the cell, restoring the negative charge inside the neuron. Meanwhile, the sodium-potassium pump has been shuttling sodium ions out and potassium ions in, re-establishing the resting potential distribution of sodium and potassium ions. Let's look at another action potential as it moves along the membrane. This time we will measure the voltage changes that occur in one spot along the membrane. A slight change in polarity causes the voltage-gated sodium channels to open. Sodium ions rush in, causing a reversal in membrane polarity. Sodium channels close and potassium channels open. As potassium ions rush out, the membrane returns to being negative on the inside. The sodium-potassium pump then restores the balance of ions present at resting potential. By no means do you need to have everything memorized. That is a preview of how it all works. So I want to go a little bit slower with you guys as we go through this. So how does this nerve impulse or this action potential or a neuron firing happen? Well, first of all, you need to have a stimulus. This could be that hot stove that we talked about. It could be the words that you hear. It could be anything, but it's some sort of uh, something that causes a reaction to happen. So first thing, a stimulus needs to happen and it needs to re reach the threshold potential. So it's kind of the threshold potential is causing enough of that stimulus in order to cause the reaction. So you're not just going to cry wolf for any old thing. There has to be something really going on in order for that neuron to fire. But as soon as the stimulus reaches that threshold potential, now sodium channels are going to open. Sodium started on the outside of the cell. Okay, here's sodium on the outside of the cell. Once the stimulus reads the threshold potential, now sodium goes in to the cell. What that does is remember right now, the, sto the, the cell started positive on the outside of the cell. It was negative, so the cell was negative on the inside. So when the sodium comes in, now the cell is positive at that point. The rest of this axon is still normal, okay? So sodium, Stimulus reaches the threshold potential, sodium channels open, sodium goes in to the cell. Now the cell is positive on the inside, negative on the outside. This is the depolarization stage. Okay. As this happens, okay, sodium went in, sodium went in, sodium channels open, sodium in, sodium channels open, sodium in, which caught, this is the dominoes part, okay? As this sodium channel opens, it causes, and sodium comes in, it causes this next sodium channel, this protein to open, and sodium to come in, which causes the next sodium channel to open, and sodium to come in, 
which causes the next sodium channel to open and sodium to come in. See what I mean? It's like dominoes. The sodium coming in causes the next sodium channel, protein, to open. With that sodium channel open, sodium goes from the outside in, which causes the next sodium channel to open and the next sodium channel to come, or this is the next sodium to come in. It's just like when you knock over the first domino, the first domino knocking over causes the second domino to knock over, which hits the third domino and causes it to knock over, which hits the fourth, so on and so forth, all the way down in a wave. But that's not it, okay? The same stimulus causes both of these to happen. It's just that the potassium part of it happens a little slower. A second wave happens, okay? And this is called the repolarization stage, okay? So what happens here is now the potassium, that's what's K, I know it's goofy, it's not our language. K stands for potassium. The potassium channel opens and potassium goes out which causes this potassium channel to open and potassium to go out, which causes this potassium channel to open and potassium to go out, which causes what? Well, this potassium channel to open as potassium goes out. All the while, remember ahead of it, sodium comes in, causes the sodium channel to open, sodium in, Sodium channel to open, sodium in. Okay, so as this is changing, when the sodium comes in, now the inside's positive. When potassium gets kicked out, the inside goes back to negative. It's a lot, I know. The combined waves travel down the neuron in a wave of opening ion channels moving down the neuron. Okay, here's the best part about everything. It can only be in one direction. And that's because, remember, this sodium channel is open right now. But as soon as potassium goes out, that also closes the sodium channel. Okay? So when this goes, when the potassium goes out, that closes sodium. So sodium is done. Sodium channel closes as soon as potassium goes out. That basically means that no more sodium can go in and it stops, it, it, sorry, let's rephrase that. That means the signal can only travel in one direction. If potassium going out stops or closes the sodium channel, that means we can never have it go back the other way. It's a good thing. We only want to communicate in one direction. So this action potential, like we said, is these waves of going down. That's how our neurons communicate. And again, that is a nerve impulse or an action potential or a neuron firing. That messages can go from your brain to your fingertips in milliseconds. That's very, 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 very fast. So after a neuron is fired, it has to reset itself. So after the neuron gets knocked down, we gotta, knock, we gotta set it back up. After we knock down the dominoes, we gotta set the dominoes back up so we can fire again. So we can knock down the dominoes again so we can communicate again. Sodium needs to move back out and the potassium needs to move back into the cell. Both are going from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration which means we need a pump to help us out with this particular one. Our pump here is the sodium potassium pump. It's active transport, so that means it requires ATP or energy. You don't need to know that three and two are the actual things, but what we do need to know is that the sodium gets pumped out of the cell because remember when it was firing, it came in. And potassium gets pumped back in because when it was firing, it went out. This resets the charge across the membrane, putting everything back, and this would be the re 
set stage of a neuron firing or of an action potential. So now the neuron is ready to fire again. As you see, the potassium is on the inside, the sodium is on the outside, the amino acids, it's negatively charged on the inside, positively charged on the outside, and everything is the way that it needs to be. And that is how a single neuron fires. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.